absolutely awesome. Uh, Valkonia with uh, We Love the Life. Tell me about uh, the song, Victor. Huh. Um, we re- <laughs> when you compose music, it's easy to do a um, kind of soul-searching song and uh, She Left Me, He Left Me song, you know. It's very difficult to do a positive song, which is not a children's song and which is not a love song, I guess. And uh, the idea was to make a song that is truly positive, honestly positive, and it's not, not you know any of those things that we mentioned. And uh, the concrete inspiration came, it's, um, well, in the Balkans, when we go where I live, my family lives in Skopje, Macedonia, and uh, the usual situation is around Christmas, and that's when the song was conceived a few years ago. Kind of timely. Yes, yes we, we have the families and the friends coming on a big table, and we drink, and we speak, and then we sing a little bit, and then we talk again, and then we sing again, and uh, one night it was like this, and then the next morning when I woke up, I took the guitar, and the song just was there. It captured that moment. So it's about live the life, really. Living life to the full. And yes, it, And yes. it's a nice upbeat song. I mean, it, it sounds, it does sound positive. It sounds cheerful. Yes. Um, so how would you describe the music of Vulcania generally? Uh, Andy, here we go. I'll try. It's um, Balkan influence where and it's, uh, yeah, it's Balkan in origin, but it's influenced by the players in it so there's western influences there's influences from rock bands from uh, jazz from other folk traditions and like all good music hopefully it's a fusion of those things it comes together and there's Volcania. Oh, and was it has it been easy to fuse um, western music with uh, Balkan folk for example well, you have to experiment you have to experiment with the songs um, later on are you going to play, play our version of Paint It Black that worked. We've tried songs. They sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Um, it's trial and error, but it's good fun trying them out. So, do, do you pick out your favourite rock numbers? I mean, I know that uh, Victor, at least, you, you've been a Led Zeppelin fan, a, a fan of Cream, uh, groups like that. Uh, uh, no, not really. I don't know. They come. This particular uh, painted black, which we're going to hear later, it was uh, when we were we had a female singer Mariana and piano player Rob, and um, we were just jamming one day, and I started playing at Muzuki, and then just Rob took over, and and then we we swapped the rhythm somehow, and you start with the idea. So it's it's a two levels. You you have this idea. You want to try something new, and uh, the new. Um, Let's go. So I'm going back. The new is, uh, you know, to 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 what's interesting in the Balkan music are the rhythms. So if you try to mix the rock music with the rhythms, that would be nice. So you try a few things, they fail out. They're not. They have to sound natural. That's really the main criterion. They have to sound normal, not fused. And then you have this in your background, this idea as a writer, something goes. And then eventually, when we were sitting with Rob and Mariana for this particular song, I started playing in, in, in some kind of rhythm. Then Rob took over, then she started doing some lyrics. So the song came out, but it, the process started really way before that. Uh, Andy, can you, can you just shed a bit more light on this question mark about rhythms and beat cycles? Because um, when we're looking at Western music, we're quite often looking at things that are in 3-4, 4-4, that's right, yeah. Four, but when we're looking at bulk rhythms, we're looking Balkan at 11 rhythms, eight. Um, Yeah. Bulgarian and such areas in the Balkans, they they have rhythms in what they call in odd time signatures. So they have 7 8, 9 8, 11 8, 13 8, which sounds like it's going to be um, undanceable or unsingable, but it's a very natural thing. It's a, basically, you know, all music is a combination of twos and threes, to put it simply. And it's where you put those twos and threes that count. Um, could you give us a 9-8 rhythm now on the, on the Darbuka? I could, yeah. So uh, a 9-8 rhythm, you think of it, there's nine beats to the bar. And uh, if I've got my mathematics right, to put it simply, three twos and one three. So one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three. It's as simple as that. Obviously, it gets more complicated. It doesn't it gets, sound that simple to me, Andy. <laughs> but it's, um, yeah, it, it's the music that works for the songs. For example, um, 
Dave Brubeck, he went to Turkey and he was inspired by those rhythms. This was He was my direct inspiration when I was back in Macedonia and he thought these rhythms are great and he wrote a song in 5-8, five, take uh, 5, then he wrote a song in 7, which is the square circle, I think, or similar to that, then he wrote in 9, which is the blue rondo. And I'm not aware of other songs, but I know those three are just songs using the rhythms of the Balkan. And then there were some programs at the time before I came. I went first to Netherlands and then here. And people were telling about the, the, the richness of, of things, of elements, of music elements in the Balkans. And uh, that's how I started. So to go back to take five, it's it's a five-eight rhythm. It's a, the most simple of those uneven rhythms is three-two or two-three. So that... 3-2 rhythm would sound something like 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. That's the basic, the folk version. But then he, what he did, he changed the accent, he made it a bit more jazzy. And then we took this rhythm and simply made a song in Bulgarian, which is called Drop by Drop, which yeah. we might just sing a bit of it. Yeah. I'd love to hear that, go for it. Fabulous, and you made that look easy as well. Um, the name of that song again? You said it's a Bulgarian song. Uh, the lyrics are, yes, from a friend of ours. It's our song, and a friend of a friend, and it's called Drop by Drop. That's the English drop by translation, drop. Kapka, Kapka, Kapka. Otherwise. Okay, um, now let's... Let's just sort of look at where everyone's based and everyone comes from, because so far you've you've talked about um, the Balkans, but you've mentioned that you grew up in Macedonia, you moved to the Netherlands, um, and and now we've got a Bulgarian song in here uh, somewhere. Well, so, Victor, <laughs> let's let's just take you right back to the beginning. You were born uh, it's in It's a Greece. long story. It will take two hours, but... Um, try I, try I, it in <laughs> two seconds. Okay, in our school, they... Uh, I work in a school uh, a few days a week. I'm a teacher there, music teacher. And they were saying, who is the most international person because we're an international school. So then I just did a sl- little chart. And my grandfather, they were Greeks. They, they were Greeks and they moved from Turkey in the 1920s if they exchanged a population. Uh, where these Rebetiko songs are made a lot. So they moved to northern Greece, and this is where my father was born, who then met somehow a woman from Yugoslavia, which was not normal situation in those days, politically incorrect, because it was a socialistic country and capitalistic country. But they met, and they fall in love. So that my mom moved to Thessaloniki, where I was born, and my second brother. Then my father bankrupted, so we moved to Macedonia, um, and then there um, I started living. It was Yugoslavia at that time, and uh, Yugoslavia, it's not very known, but I personally believe it has the strongest rock scene in Europe, probably after the British. Uh, very original music, uh, influenced by British and American, but also with a very strong Bregovic, which you might have heard. Goran Bregovic. Goran Bregovic was the rock leader. He was a rock star in Yugoslavia before he went down to, to do Balkan music. But he actually brought the rock and roll, you can say, to Yugoslavia in a way. So I grew up as a guitar player. My nickname was Victor Slohand uh, from Eric Slohan because I used to play Eric Clapton, Peter Green, Santana. That's me. That's really who am I. I'm a blues guitar player. And then eventually I started to discover the other side, which is the Greek side. And that was in an island. We went with my girlfriend and it was very expensive in Mykonos. <laughs> and in two days we didn't have any yes. money. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I started to work as a waiter and I worked two jobs and I was kicked from both. Uh, they, they only lasted half a day each. 
and I was not good enough. So I thought, we should need to go home. So as we were walking, I saw Ben playing bouzouki there in nicely sitting in chairs. And I thought, I can play that. I can probably play that. Uh. So on the way back, I bought some Greek tapes because I, you know, my Greek heritage probably worked in me. So I started learning this bouzouki and I thought, wow, there are scales, you know, amazing scales, amazing rhythms, which I didn't see in rock music. So eventually I bought the bouzouki, but I think since that moment started this idea that two worlds apart, seemingly, but under, you know, they, they have many connections. You know, there, there is a pentatonic scale in Greek music, which is using in, used in the blues music. So that's how I started. So I started the rock bands and everything in, and actually the the biggest success we had in Yugoslavia was a hip hop band. We we did a hip hop at some point, mm. but the original thing was we did it in our own language. We did Serbo Croatian Macedonian, so we had quite a few hits there on the scene. But it was just before the war ah. in Yugoslavia, so eventually so early nineties, late eighties, early nineties. So it was not really possible to late eighties more than late eighties. Yeah. Yes, mm. it was not possible to to do much about it. So eventually I went to Netherlands and. Uh, um, I remember then I started doing this kind of demo of music and everything and then uh, a guy there was a band playing from America and I worked in some club and I was playing these tapes while I was uh, doing setting up the stage and uh, he said what music is this it's really interesting I thought oh that's my music so he said you should really try and record this it's really good it's original and that's how the story really started well it's not so much a story it's more of a novel isn't it your life um <laughs> Okay, so we can see that you've you've you're a cross genre artist. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, you, you can work with almost any kind of music by the sounds of it. How many languages do you speak as well? Then <laughs> that's a heritage again. So at home we spoke Greek and Macedonian in the same conversation because my father never learned. Uh, you know, the, for the Greeks, for the as Maria probably knows, for the Greeks of my father's generation, the, it was difficult to pronounce sh j you know, those um, soft vowels. So he really never learned the language. He was old when he came, I guess. So it was, uh, my ma we spoke two languages, just normal, you mm. know, with him and her. So I grew up with two languages. At school, I learned English. And then eventually I went, uh, when the war started, I went first to the Netherlands. Yeah, so did you and learn Dutch? I learned I mean, Dutch a bit <laughs> as well. You did, you did learn a bit of Dutch as well. Yes, yeah, yeah. so I speak some Dutch. Uh, I found it the most difficult, I must say, but uh, I, I can speak if I go there and I will actually in two weeks and then um, I um, we did Serbian at school because we were Yugoslavia Serbian was the official language and uh, that's the other language and then the Dutch and then well that's it really. mm. and just very quickly the um, the girlfriend that was with you during your moments of poverty mm -hmm. that girlfriend we made a son in uh, we married and we we had a son together and then we divorced he still lives in the netherlands so i'm going to see him next week there uh, 23 handsome young boy and uh, okay. then i remarried with a bulgarian wife a few years ago and i have a daughter with her which is two years now nadezhda and that's how i learned some bulgarian as well actually <laughs> it's how you learn some bulgarian language some but some bulgarian language but of course there is also a member of the band in Volkania that is yes, bulgarian yes, as well yes. but before we talk about him andy dewar do you have a little novel for me well, or my story a is very short <laughs> i was born in north london in tottenham and i live in north london now in crouch end uh that's it <laughs> And but here you but are living playing, in London, I mean you. And you're playing Darbuka. I play Darbuka. So I play congas. I play I play many different kinds of drums and percussion. And living in London and being brought up in London, it's a wonderful place for just seeing so many cultural influences. And the world comes to London, and we welcome it for sure. That's music. why this program's called The World in London. But um, there are some percussionists, as we know, that they stick to a conventional drum kit and they never really move beyond that. But you've moved into Middle Eastern percussion. I moved into Latin Eastern, percussion. Yeah. I moved into this and uh, like I, I played quite a lot of Cuban music and Brazilian music. Um, I became interested in Balkan music about five years ago and uh, I met um, Victor through, he was advertising for a drummer percussion player. I'd never really dabbled in these things, these uneven rhythms, but I enjoy the challenge of it. I enjoy the challenge I enjoy, and I love the music. It's such a life of hermit music. So it's we started playing together with Andy, and then we felt he's not ready, really. He did never played. So, you know, kindly we said, Andy, we think you're not really ready to, to join our band. And then in the meantime, Andy was asking a lot of music, so we gave him. So, you know, we didn't hear from him for a year. Then after a year, he said, I think I'm now ready. And I said, yes. 
and he'd got off I, and practiced. Yes, and he really the challenge. I think the challenge he mentioned. He took it on board, and uh, he he earned it. And you know he is now uh, a fully fledged member of our camp. <laughs> <laughs> You've earned your stripes, Andy. I tell you, you what. Let's have another another song from you. Yes. Just, just um, the fusion of rhythms. Uh, yes, I would like to mention these things. Uh, the, uh, it's, it's the seventh, eighth rhythm, which, um, well, in Macedonia we call it the straight rhythm. They, they, they live on this. It's 80% of the songs are, are made on this rhythm. And uh, fusion with rock uh, here, uh, that sounds like this. Absolutely terrific here on a world in London, Vulcania with DJ Ritu. What does Vulcania actually mean? Oh, it's a word uh, for Balkans in Greek language. But it has this nice female sound to it, which I think I, I thought, oh, it's nice, really. You know, it sounds like a female name, but it's, uh, yeah, Vulcania. It's like the, you know, the Bible is really in Greek is Viblia. Everything that is Byzantium is Byzantia. So Balkan is Vulcania. It, it, uh, it's, a, it, it's a nice name. I think it's a really nice name. It's, it's catchy. It's mm. catchy. Catchy Thanks. and easy to yes. remember. And it, it does have that slightly feminine yeah. um, aura about it. Um, a, a lot of people, I think a lot of people uh, have a certain stereotype about Balkans music, mm? um, which tends to be based around an image of gypsy brass bands, um, maybe in more recent years also club DJs, doing well Balkan beats albums you know with house house sort of uh, beats going on in there do you feel that you can change this perception and widen it and make people more aware of what well this is you know when you said what are we playing I think we have two streams of, of music really mainstreams and one is what we are playing probably now here in the studio which is the fusion I think that's our uh, most strong side and uh, you're right. The idea was to show that Balkan has much, uh, much deeper maybe side, a different side, not not necessarily deeper, but different side to the music than those brass bands and, you know, the umpapa kind of style. Yeah. Uh, but we also were aware that you know if we play songs like the one previously, uh, you know, if you play maybe twenty of those songs, that people might get a bit depressed or I don't <laughs> know. And it's nice to have also um, um, kind of um, contra you know, c counterpoint of the music you make. So uh, the other stream is we just go back to the roots of the Balkan music, uh, the, you know, wedding songs, songs that we make that sounds like uh, songs made in the Balkans, you know, root music. So that's, these are the two streams, you know, joyful and light music and also a bit more philosophical and uh, fusion. Uh, do you write most of the songs, Victor, or is, uh, it, a, is it a band uh, effort together? No, at the moment I write l most of the songs and we take s many covers, but also Balderanov is getting ready. He, he is writing some songs. He's a bit, uh, I don't know, taking his time to do it, but uh, if he listens now, maybe it's time to bring them on. Maybe, maybe he's not as confident as you or... or He's busy with other things, perhaps. Yes. Is it for the okay. Well, we won't talk about that. But um, right now, how can people actually get hold of your album? 
Uh, well, I guess if they listen to your next show, and uh, you will do uh, some competition, I understand. <laughs> I, I, we will. Uh, that's uh, to get it for free. Uh, but otherwise, uh, I think the best way is to go to our website, and uh, the links to 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 Bandcamp uh, where and CD Baby, the links are there. So instead of telling all the stores, it's 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 all on the usual, you know, uh, independent uh, websites. I should mention that uh, this. Um, CD was there is a, a project in the States called Indie Acoustic uh, Project, and uh, people from all the world send music uh, to them for listening. And uh, it's not a commercial project; it just uh, the guy who runs it. He said, "I was tired of the big labels just playing the same kind of commercial playlist through the year, and there's so many good releases." So he, it's a it's a small group of people that are running it, and they wanted to. To hear and promote the good music, so we sent last year our CD Roots uh, to 13 when it was released, and it was chosen as one of the three best world music CDs. Excellent. So it's worth buying it. Yeah, no, no surprise there. No so surprise the website is uh, Vulcania.com, which is probably difficult to spell, but maybe if they go on your uh, website, they can find you there. Absolutely, uh, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you have you both here uh, from Vulcania. Uh, Victor uh, Masturidis and uh, Andy Dewar, thank you so much. We've got one more track from you today, um, which is going to be uh, Paint It Black and yeah. your version of the Rolling Stones classic. Yes, the, the fusion that uh, we think it's great. Fabulous. <laughs> So for sure, find uh, Valkania's web links and information at djrithu.com. And on the Cultural Cooperation website, we'll have that all up for you later today or tomorrow. Plus on our Facebook pages and at Twitter. See a red door and I want-